Okay, so in this video we want to have a look at perpendicular and parallel lines. Let's focus on parallel first, so that's a little bit easier. So if we have parallel lines, um, and we use arrows on two straight lines to indicate that they are parallel, um, and if they are, if AB is parallel to CD, this is how we write it. AB is, and then we have those two vertical lines that indicate that it's parallel to CD. What can we say about the gradients of parallel lines? Okay, so we know that parallel lines have the same gradient. So let's have a look at an example where we might need to refer to um, the lines being parallel. Show that the line passing through the points 6, 4 and 7, 11 is parallel to the line passing through the points 0, 0 and 1, 7. Okay, so we want to show that. So we need to be able to show that we understand what gradient means and that we understand what it means for two lines to be parallel. Okay, it's not up for the person to the person marking our work to be able to intuit things from our working. It's up to us to show it explicitly and be really clear about the fact that we understand what it means for two lines to be parallel. So the first thing we're going to need to do is calculate the respective gradients. And obviously, if they're parallel, we're going to expect them to be the same. But when they are the same, we then need to draw a conclusion about that. Therefore, because the gradient of AB is the same as the gradient of PQ, the lines AB and PQ must be parallel. Okay, so let's work out the gradient of AB. So referring back a few videos ago to calculating gradient, rise over run, change in the Y values, so 11 minus 4 over changing the x values, being consistent about how you use the coordinates, so I need to be 7 minus 6, 11 minus 4 is 7, 7 minus 6 is 1, and so the gradient from A to B is 7. Separately, we'll work out the gradient from P to Q. So you don't just say the gradient from P to Q is 7, so therefore the lines are parallel, you actually need to show that PQ also has a gradient of 7, and then draw a conclusion. So again, change in the y values, over change in the x values, so 7 over 1, which is also 7. So therefore, since the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of PQ, AB must be parallel to PQ. Okay. Alright, perpendicular lines. If AB is, so perpendicular means that the lines are at right angles, so there's a 90 degree angle in between them. Okay. Um, if line AB is perpendicular to CD, we write this. AB is, it's sort of like a little upside down T, perpendicular to CD. Okay, there's lots of um, different sort of geometries that we can do here, but one of the things that's important is that if this is a right angle in between them, let's just think about two triangles. So let's think about this, I'm just going to draw it slightly color coded reasons that may or may not appear obvious. Okay, so let's think about this purple triangle here versus this blue triangle here. Okay, so we know that they're both right angled triangles obviously. I can You can see because of the scale that they're the same triangle. The diagram's a little bit skewed but you can see from the grid they're, you know, the red length is one and the green length is two. So therefore they're the same triangle. Um, but equally, we can also kind of work that out from the, the 90 degree angle. So um, we know that if we call, if we were to call, let's say, if we were to call that angle um, theta, for example, then that angle up there would be 90 minus theta, okay, because of the sum of the angles in the triangle. 180 degrees, you've got 90 degree right angle already here, so the other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. Now we also know that that angle in there is 90 minus theta. Okay, that's the same thing here. And then we know that this angle over here, this one up here, is going to be the same as this one down here because they're vertically opposite angles. So that's also 90 minus theta, which means that this angle up here must be theta. Okay, so what you have now is two, these two triangles have exactly the same angles and so therefore they must be similar triangles but we can also show that they've got exactly the same lengths as well. So if they're exactly the same triangle, 
Now I know you could probably say, oh, I could tell they were the same by looking at them, but let's sort of, we're trying to be a bit more precise than that. Okay, so if they're exactly the same triangles, the lengths are all the same. Okay, so we know, and we know they're the same, um, so we know that that length there, let's call that, I know that that's one on this scale, but let's just call that generally the run. And let's call this generally the rise. So if you think about this other triangle, which we know is the same, a congruent triangle, and this becomes the run. So we know that the gradient of AB is rise over run. Okay. We know that Maybe I won't, actually, maybe I won't call it rise and run because I'm going to confuse you. Let me just change the notation there. Let's just call it two different lengths. Let's just call that, um, you know, X and that length Y. That's a bit confusing as well, but I'll go with capital X and capital Y. Let's call that capital X and that capital Y, okay? So if we're working out the gradient of AB, we know that that is rise over run. In this case, that's going to be Y over X, okay? Whereas when we look at the gradient of CD, we can see that that clearly has a negative gradient and that its rise is actually X and its run is actually Y. Okay, So this connection from this to this is important when we look at perpendicular lines. Okay, So we can see that what is the rise and the run switches around. So in terms of calculating gradient, we need to flip our fraction we call that taking the reciprocal, okay? So when we reverse the numerator and denominator, we've taken the reciprocal of the fraction and we also need to make it negative. So the perpendicular gradient is the negative reciprocal. Now we can verify that for this line because we can work out that rise here is two and run here is one. So the gradient of that is two over one, which is two. Whereas the gradient of this is clearly um, negative um, and the rise is 1 and the run is 2. So gradient is 2, gradient is negative half. There are two ways to look at the relationship between the gradients of perpendicular lines. One is that if you multiply the gradients of two perpendicular lines together, you should get negative 1. We can see that up here in this example, negative half times positive 2 will give us negative 1. Um, or the other alternative and the mo more useful practical one is this idea of the negative reciprocal. Gradient 2 will be the negative reciprocal, so we've flipped gradient 1 upside down, of gradient, of, um, yeah, so gradient 2 will be the negative reciprocal of gradient 1. Okay, so let's just have a look at that idea. So state the gradient of a line that is perpendicular to a line with gradient negative 2. Okay, so if a line has a gradient of negative 2, if it helps, you can think about that as negative 2 over 1. So the perpendicular gradient is going to be equal to positive because we multiply by negative 1 so that'll change it to a positive and we flip it so it's going to be equal to positive 1 half. Okay. If the original gradient was 1 quarter the perpendicular gradient is going to be we multiply by negative 1 so it's, it was positive up here so it's now going to be negative okay. and we flip it if we flip 1 over 4 we get 4 over 1 and 4 over 1 is just 4. If the gradient was 1, 1 is 1 over 1, the perpendicular gradient is going to be equal to, now we, we multiply it by negative 1, so it's going to be, it was originally positive, it's now going to be negative, and if we flip it, we still get 1 over 1, and so the perpendicular gradient is negative 1. If the original gradient was negative 2 thirds, the perpendicular gradient, we're going to multiply by negative 1, so it's going to become positive, Okay, and we flip the two thirds so it becomes positive, sorry, positive three on two. Okay, consider the points A, B, P, and Q. We've got coordinates there. Q has an unknown x coordinate. Find T if AB is perpendicular to PQ. Okay, let's calculate the gradient of AB. Gradient of AB is 12 minus 0 over 0 minus 6, so it's 12 over negative 6 which is negative 2. Okay. Gradient of PQ is, um, I'm going to do it, I'm going to, so I have the, it would be an easier equation to solve. I want to have, I want the denominator to be T minus 8 rather than 8 minus T. Just makes the equation a bit nicer, but 
you'll get there in the long run if you do it the other way around. So if I want t minus 8 on the denominator, I need to have 8 minus 10 on the numerator. So it's negative 2 on t minus 8. Now, perpendicular gradient to this, perpendicular to negative 2 is positive 1 half. And so therefore, we need the gradient of PQ to be equal to positive 1 half, and so we can solve that equation. Okay, So let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Well, we can do it in two ways. Multi cross multiply, which I don't like because I find students don't understand what they're doing and they often use it incorrectly. But in this situation, when you've got one fraction equal to another fraction, you can cross multiply. So you get negative 4 equals 1 times t minus 8. Okay. That's the quickest way to do it. If you need to, the fail-safe method, common denominator. Your common denominator in this instance is going to be two lots of t minus 8. So if we did that, two lots of t minus 8. You've multiplied the denominator of the left-hand side by 2, so you do the same to the numerator. You've multiplied the denominator of the right-hand side by t minus 8, so you do the same to the numerator. Now you can multiply by your denominators and you get straight to the equation that we had here. So when you're cross multiplying, that is what's happening. Okay, but you can only cross multiply if you have one fraction equal to another fraction, if there's nothing else in the equation. The minute there's something else, um, you need to um, you're gonna need to use another method. Um, okay, so negative four equals t minus eight, adding eight to both sides, we find that t equals positive four. So if t equals positive four, if we stick that back up there. We're going to have uh, negative 2 and negative 4, so we're going to have a gradient of positive a half, which is indeed perpendicular to negative 2. Okay, question 4. Find the equation of the line which is parallel to this line and which passes through this point. Okay, so parallel to this line is telling us about gradient. So we need to work out what the gradient of this line is, and then because they're parallel, our line will have the same gradient. So we first of all need to get this line into gradient intercept form. So we know we have 4x plus 2y equals 1. Okay, we want to make y the subject. So 2y equals negative 4x plus 1. Dividing by 2, y equals negative 2x plus half. Okay, so the gradient is negative 2. Our line is parallel and so the gradient we want is also going to be negative 2. Okay. Now, so we've got a gradient of negative 2 going through the point 3, 5, and so now it's about finding the equation of a line. As you know, I prefer to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I substitute in my point, the y coordinate of my point, gradient, and the x coordinate of my point, and then I rearrange to make y the subject. Uh, adding 5, so minus 2x plus 11. Or you can use y equals mx plus c, you sub in the gradient which is negative 2, then you sub in your point which means when x equals 3, y equals 5, c equals 11, and then you put c back into your original equation and you get your final answer. Okay. Personally I find this is quicker um, there's less steps, it's a bit more streamlined, you put all the information in, you make y the subject, this will always work. I find students are always drawn to y equals mx plus c, even though it's not the most efficient. Have a play with the other version, see if when it, once it becomes familiar with it, you become more, more comfortable. Okay, question five. Find the equation of the line which is perpendicular to this line. Okay, so this is giving us our information about gradient and passes through this point. Okay. So perpendicular to that line, we want to think about that what the gradient of that line is. So it's y equals 2x plus 1 all over 5. Let's be clear that that means that's the same as 2x on 5 plus 1 on 5. Okay, And so here's our gradient here, 2 fifths. Now our line is perpendicular to this line. So our gradient is going to be negative 5 on 2. Okay, So that's what we need. And we've got our point. So I'm going to find the equation. I'm not going to do it twice this time. If you want to do y equals mx plus c, by all means, have a pause and do y equals mx plus c, and then let's see if we end up, we should, if we've both done it correctly, end up with the same answer at the end. 
Okay, so it's y minus the y coordinate equals the gradient times x minus the x coordinate. So expanding the brackets, minus 5 on 2x plus 5 on 2. And then we want to add 1. 1 is the same as 2 on 2. So 5 on 2 plus 2 on 2 is 7 on 2. Okay, question 6. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB where A is 7, 0 and B is 1, 8. Now I should have left us some more room here. I'm just going to draw a rough sketch off to the edge here because I want to explain what a perpendicular bisector is. So we have 1, 8 and 7, 0. Okay, so let's put 7, 0 there. That's going to be, that's A. And 1, 8 somewhere up here, which is B. Okay, so we want to find the perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular, we've talked about, it's going to be a line that's at right angles to this, but it also needs to bisect, which means cut in two. Okay, and actually it needs to cut it evenly in two. So it's going to need to be both perpendicular and going through the midpoint. Okay. So we want to work out, we need to find gradient and a point to find the equation of the red line. So we're going to need to find the gradient of AB and use that gradient to find the gradient of the red line. But we're also going to need to use the midpoint as the point. We can't use either of these points. The perpendicular bisector doesn't go through either of these points. Okay. So let's calculate our gradient of AB first. Gradient of AB, rise over run. You've got your diagram if you need. 8 minus 0 over 1 minus 7. So that's 8 over negative 6, so negative 4 thirds. Okay, so that means that the perpendicular gradient is going to be positive 3 quarters. Okay, and then we also need the midpoint. Yeah, sorry, I've left us a bit crowded here. The midpoint, remember, is the average of the x coordinates, 7 plus 1 over 2, and the average of the y coordinates, 0 plus 8 over 2. Oops. So that's uh, 8 over 2 and 8 over 2, so 4, 4. Okay, so we've got our gradient and our point, and so we can find our equation of the perpendicular bisector. So it's going to be y minus the y coordinate equals the gradient times x minus the x coordinate, expanding out the brackets on the right, 3 quarters x, 3 quarters times 4. Please try, try to get past writing that and thinking about that as 12 over 4. 3 divided by 4 and then times 4, the 4s are cancelling out. That's going to cancel with that when you multiply them together. Okay, So we're just going to get minus 3. And then we need to add 4 to both sides, so 3 quarters x plus 1 is the equation of our perpendicular bisector. And that vaguely makes sense. I haven't drawn scale, so you know this should be a bit higher up, but things aren't perfectly scaled but it's making sense. A positive gradient definitely um, and a wind step somewhere near the origin um, is making sense. Okay, once again there are some much older videos explaining these concepts um, linked there and the practice work for today is from exercise 1, I think that's 1i, not 1l, 1i um, on page 59 of your textbook and those are the questions.